Thank you. Thank you very much. All this money, so little time. Here we go. Hi. My name's Stuart McDonald, and this is my TED Talk. Uh, thank you very much for coming out to just see me. This is great. <laughs> Uh, what I'd like to tell you is uh, I want to uh, explain how I developed this act. And uh, the title of it is How I Fooled Penn and Teller Using Lean Principles and Continuous Improvement. <laughs> it's true. It's true. These are some of the, uh, the, some of the uh, principles that I use. I, I don't have a lot of time to get in-depth in all of them. But uh, we're going to start with the first one, which is direct observation. Now, direct observation is very important because if you have a problem, you have to go to where the work is being done, observe it, and then you can figure out how to lean the process out, solve problems. Now, I have a lone wolf pictured here behind me because we've all had lone wolves in our workplace who solve the problem all by themselves, but they forget about all the pe people that are upstream, and they forget all the people that are downstream of the problem. So when they solve the problem, no, no one is clear how they solve the problem, and in most cases, they create more problems, both upstream and downstream, because they solved it without getting the process partners together. Now, as magicians, the reason why you don't see a lot of good magicians is because we are lone wolves. We are not supposed to tell our secrets. So uh, I decided to make my act an open source. I opened it up to my audience, my friends, my colleagues, and I developed a team. And some of these are engineers. Some of these people are uh, uh, actually from Broadway, uh, Broadway production designer, uh, magicians, neighbors, anybody that would watch my act. Now, the funny thing is, is that nobody wants to criticize a performer because our egos are so fragile. <laughs> so I, I couldn't ask somebody, did you like my act? And if, if I said that, I was I'll always get the answer, it was great. But I needed to change the question because I needed more answers. I needed to get to the problem of the act because it really wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. So I changed the question to, what bothered you? And that really made a big difference because by saying what bothered you, me as an entertainer, when I'm up on stage, I don't want to bother you. I want to entertain you. So they started flooding me with ideas. And as these ideas started coming, I started use this, using process mapping to put my act together on my living room wall for all my friends to see. I called it offline uh, rehearsal, re rehearsal uh, editing. What I would do is I'd take a trick or an idea and I'd put it over here and then I'd take one and put it over there. And I would look at it and before committing the act to memory, I would say, eh, yeah, I think that'll work. And then once I got something to the point where it was uh, either good for an audience test or good for a test in front of some of my, some of my colleagues online, I showed the, the video to them. And that led me to five why. Because all they kept on asking me was, why? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? It doesn't make any sense. Because we're way beyond what bothered you now. Now they get it. They understand. And uh, the criticizing, it wasn't critical anymore. It was now director, actor. And it really made a big difference. Because if you're not familiar with five why, if you ask the question five why, what, five, five times a question why, you get to the root of the problem that you're looking for by the time you ask the fifth why. Why is the mirror here? Why is the mirror covered? Why is that table here? Why are you here? Who are you? Where are we? And I found out that I was missing three major elements. Time, place, and character. And once we figured that out, the act got noticed. And it started developing. At first, the, uh, the act had an oval mirror, and then I changed the oval mirror to a vanity, and you can see I have a brown suit there. Then the brown suit went to like a vaudevillian character, and then I took the, the mirror off of the table, and I put it on the floor. And once that happened, the producers of Penn & Teller got a hold of me, and they said, we want to put you on the show. And I was like, oh, this is great. I'm going to be on national television with my, my all-time favorite magicians, Penn & Teller, and I have to fool them. And I asked myself the question, can I fool them? And I said, no, I couldn't fool them. So I had this radical idea of continuous improvement. 30 days prior to being on their TV show, I was going to videotape my act from every conceivable angle, and I was going to do it 100 times in 30 days. And I did. 
Now, the object of these videotapings was to improve one thing after each video session. So at the end of 30 days, my act would be 100 times better than it was 30 days before. And boy, did it work. Because the very first time I performed in front of Penn and Teller was the very first time I performed this act live in front of an audience. I did it in front of a studio audience in a contest on television. And this is the result of all of those <laughs> YouTube videos that I sent out to everybody. And yep, I fooled Penn and Teller. <laughs> Michigan boy fooled Penn and Teller. Thank you. So I want to leave you with this. Use continuous improvement and lean principles with anything that you tear, tear to do, tear to do, anything you care to do really well. Whether it's magic, whether it's business, family, organizing your wood shop, it doesn't matter. Because if you do that, unintentional benefits will follow you. My unintentional benefit was not to be on Penn and Teller. It was to be in the World Championships of Magic. And you see the results here. So use these principles. They will work. Thank you.